You okay? Yeah. Oh. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Starbucks Homestead. Hi. That's Zach. And I'm Jen. That's annoying Rusty. That's Rusty. <laughs> That's the Guineas. <laughs> Well and this farm. is a rainy day. It's disgusting and cold. But we've got to get our meat chickens into their permanent home. Maybe permanent. Permanent for now. We'll see. Never know what will change. But we gotta do it. But first, we have to evict these guys. I don't even know why they're in here. Y'all don't live in here. And you don't even sleep in here. But they hang out in here during the day. Also, it's disgusting. So we have to move it. We we'll also have to fix the door. And we have to fix the back because it's unattached. Big project. I don't know why they're hanging out in there. They don't lay eggs in there. Have you ever had chickens just show up on your farm? Those two right there are bantams. We don't have any bantams. We've only had bantams one time and it was like seven years ago. It was our first chicken. And they just showed up here. One of them did and then the next few days Another one did. So they just live here now and they get along with all the chickens. All right, first project is to fix the back. I don't remember why it's like this. Do you? I ran out of tin and then we were like, oh, well, it can be like ventilation. So we just put a part off. Yeah, well, I guess it got ripped off somehow. So we just sort of staple that back on and it'll be fine. It's ventilation, it's good. It allows the airflow to come through and maybe dry it up when it is not as wet <laughs> so this little thing is not the coolest or prettiest chicken coop that we've ever had um we've had some pretty pretty crazy little chicken coops <laughs> yeah we've had some wild looking things uh, but this most one, of them look like they're gonna fly away yes this one does not it just kind of looks like a little cracker jack box yeah. <laughs> but works. we threw it together last year when we got our meat chickens when we moved here um, we just had some stuff flying around and we threw it together and it keeps them safe. We never had an issue with a predator getting in. It is tight, um, despite that, what you saw, we fixed it. And we do put the electrical fence around it, but for the meat chickens, we're gonna just put them in it and leave them in it and lock it for probably a couple weeks until they get bigger because um, we have been seeing an eagle fly. Yeah, a bald eagle. Yeah, and I've we have our fair share of wow. hawks and they're still, fairly little so we don't want to leave them exposed but it'll be nice for them to get out here and get on grass and get in the sunshine and not be in their little brooder box anymore it does help that the guineas are free range mm -hmm. around this area and the cows are here just yeah. for eagle and hawk protection having bigger things close helps but they're not going to be close enough to where it's a, they're really going to help yeah. this one, but... oh you okay yeah. oh. Hi. i don't know if i caught that or not <laughs> it was slippery. He fell. Oh, he's okay Lord. though. <laughs> so we were gonna use the truck to move it, but he's just going on and doing well, it for some reason. It's muddy. Very muddy. Very slippery. Let me get the water. Okay. Nope. Nope. Went down again. <laughs> Not recommended to do that when it's been raining. You got like four inches of rain on the ground. Oh, thankfully the ground was soft and it didn't hurt me too bad. How was the show, babe? That was entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> she was nervous the first, that first. The first time, the second she, time I was because I slipped underneath of it. Uh, I and, thought it was heavy. Yeah, it's not heavy, but these boots, man. Grandma Karen got them for me for Christmas, and they have all their attraction, but they are slippery. Man, they're slippery. As soon as you get on a little mud, and if you have a farm or homestead, you know, animal, poo, real slippery. Yeah, it's real steep. My backside is awful. Mm -hmm. It's in awful shape. It's gonna be a shower for me after this, it Hot looks like. Night. Hot tub night, that's right. <laughs> All right, now I just gotta get the door on it. We'll put the fans up and get this daggone chickens in here. They're gonna taste even better now. Yep. <laughs> Since it is a little wet out here, they have grass in there, but we're gonna put some hay in there just for a little extra I don't know, insulation, I guess, would be a good way to call it. So you haven't seen us use the Premier One electric fencing in a while because we've been using the poly tape for the cows and everybody else is either in the barn with Dolly so they don't need it or the chickens free range and they don't have any issues out here. 
they don't get taken or attacked or anything because of the perimeter fencing. But for the meat chickens, they're a whole lot more vulnerable. So that's why we're putting this up. And Dolly's over there, which will help. And, you know, Xena and Rusty are over there, which helps. But it just gives them an extra layer of protection since they are for food. We don't want to lose a bunch of them and right. lose our investment. And one thing, sorry, I don't know if he's cutting off. One thing I've learned with these fences, don't try to guess the distance. Go get your two ends, put them together, and then make your circle around it. You'll never get it right. That's smart. <laughs> All right, so this is our first round that we got. They're getting really big. So we just got them out of the brooder and we've got them into this tote and we're gonna take them up. They've got their big feathers. Um, we'll see how they do. But see how they don't look weird, like yeah. Cornish crosses. They have their feathers. They got a little bit under here, Yeah. Um, but that'll grow pretty quickly. They just, they look like more of a normal bird. Yeah. And that's one of the big things that we like. If this was a Cornish cross, there'd probably be any feathers on it. That's true. Yeah. That look good. Okay, and this is that second round that we got, and they're all doing really well too. And they're going in with the big guys. There's really not much of a size difference. Uh, they'll be fine. But yeah. for, for one week though, because they're only a week difference. Yeah. You can see how fast they grow in that short amount of time. Yep, they're finding the food and water. Yep. They like it. All right, and those free boards, they got to put a four by four there. And we had a little bit of a high side over here, so I put another one there. Um, that, just while they're small, they could slip out of that, but they're all happy. So, we would like to sit around and watch them for a minute, but I'm, I'm muddy. It's just raining. We, it got to the point where we just had to do something in the rain because yeah. it didn't stop raining. Um, like I said, we're on our way to four inches of rain at the moment and i'm about to show you what that dog is barking at because i know you heard it the entire time of this video we have a river yeah there's nothing we can do i mean we've tried everything i promise so don't even suggest nothing because we tried it <laughs> he's just rusty as who he is who he is yeah. all right real quick you can buy a gate they got them we've used them a lot we have several um we just don't use them very often because to be honest they kind of have a uh gaps and could be part of predators so if you put your two here, you have your two hookups that you get going on here. You can just wrap them around each other. So you can just wrap them around, that holds it tight. And then so whenever you want to come in, you just turn your power off, unhook and you can walk in, or you can turn your power off and bend over it. Now, don't highly suggest that. My mother-in-law broke her arm. Yeah, I don't suggest that way. But trying to go in that way, once you have your power on, you just turn it on and then you want to check it just to make sure. 8,000, 8,000. All right, we're good to go. There you have it. That's what he's barking at. All day. Literally all day. If that little drain creek area is flowing, he's playing in it. And he loves every minute of it. I think he wants it to go faster. Yeah, I mean, he's happy. Yeah. We're not. I mean, it's about as fast as it can possibly go right now. <laughs> huh? I was just trying to make you mad because you weren't sitting down yet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yo, yo, I'm telling you, you need to live with her. It's funny. That is funny. Okay, so the rain has stopped. We have cleaned up. 
because we got a muddy chicken poo mess all over us. I can feel the soreness trying to settle in just a tad. It's not gonna hurt. I really hope I got it. Y'all will know by now if I did. Yeah. But man, it was rough. <laughs> she said, I thought I was gonna kill you. I was but, worried for a minute, but once I realized he was okay, then I, you know, and the funny. laughter. Then we can all laugh. <laughs> But anyways, uh, we wanted to talk a little bit of the details about moving the chickens out from a brooder to the outside, when, why, all that good stuff. So first off, meat chickens take around 10 to 12 weeks-ish. Always varies, but that's kind of your average time on how long it takes from being hatched to when you butcher. It's a very fast process. So we've already, we got these chickens the first round, the bigger ones, January 31st week. Yep. The next one's the, I guess, second week of February. Mm -hmm. So they're already a few weeks old. We're already almost to that halfway point, yep. to be honest with you. So chickens, they're going to grow fast, but they're not going to grow that quickly unless you get them outside in the sun and on some grass. Let them peck around in some bugs and all that good stuff. So it's important as soon as they get those true feathers, get them outside. But you need to protect them. Now, I think we need to make the distinction between if these were laying chickens and if these are meat chickens. There's a, It's a similar process on getting them outside, but meat chickens are a little bit different. Um, I know people will probably look at that fence and think, well, they're going to fly over it. If they were laying hens, they absolutely would. Meat chickens cannot get themselves up off the ground. They just grow too fast and they get really chunky. That so we don't really have to worry way. about that. They would flap and try. Yeah. Um, and the coop itself, you know, you would keep laying hens in there for a couple weeks just so they know it's home. Um, you saw us put the fence up. The fence is not really for them. The fence is for predators that may come. We don't want any kind of predator to get anywhere near that coop, even though it is, I mean, no chicken coop is ever 100% tight, but it's as tight as it can be. So that's what the fence is for, is to keep predators off of the coop and keep them out, not necessarily to keep the chickens in. Um, and we don't have to worry about flying predators right now because uh, if you have that kind of fence and the chickens are little, yes, they can be taken by hawks or eagles, whatever else flies around your area. Uh, but those meat chickens are gonna stay in that coop and for a pretty good amount of time. We'll move it back and forth so that they can get on grass. Uh, we'll let them out when they're near the end, when they're fighting size and nothing can pick them up. But right now that's just their home and that's where they're gonna be. Yeah. So if you cut our last video, one thing that I really felt like home today was fighting that Premier One fence. Yeah. Um, we love those things, but man, it's like, it really is like a fishing net. It'll mm -hmm. tangle and do all that stuff, which is part of its goal as well in front of those tighter areas is to catch whatever may come in if the shock doesn't deter them. Um, so when she was talking about predators, we're talking about minks, weasels, raccoons, possums, uh, wild dogs, wild cats, things like that. It's gonna shock them real good and back them up. Um, but I know a lot of people are gonna ask, what fence was that? Um, because if you go to Premier One, sometimes it can get a little confusing. They have a lot of numbers on there and it can be a little difficult. I will have it linked down below, but you're looking for poultry netting and we always get 48 inch tall, 48 inch high. Even with laying hens, obviously they can fly over it. It seems to deter them a little bit more because they can't land on top of it. They actually have to clear it. Um, but if you get that 42 inch, it seems like they just, they coast right over it. So it is the poultry fencing. 48 inches high, and that one specifically was the single spike, so that's your post, it only has one spike. I do recommend getting the two spike. Um, it's a little bit more sturdy and a little bit more durable. Um, so that's the specifics on that, because I know people are interested. One more thing about those fences, you'll see it online. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but it's some kind of like chick guard that you yeah. put at the bottom. And I wanna say it's like two foot tall maybe, but it covers those bigger holes so that your little small chicks can't go running out. Yeah. Because at the size they are now, if we were to let them out in the fence, which we're not, they could get through those holes. So that's a really cool thing. We've never actually had it mm -hmm. because we just usually wait until they're too big to slide out of the holes. Um, but it's a really cool um, tool that they have on there if you're interested in putting them out when they're smaller. Yeah, it's basically like if you have electrified hardware cloth, like mm -hmm. really tight hardware cloth that runs all the way at the bottom. So yeah. it is pretty neat. The last thing about the fence, um, you might be saying, well, why would you even need that? Isn't it supposed to shock them? Like she had mentioned, this is more to keep them out. Chickens are very insulated. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that they're going to touch on that fence and it's not going to shock them, all their feathers that they have. Your best way of even getting a chicken to get shocked is normally their feet and think about a chicken, they're not coming up with their feet, they're coming up with their body. So they can usually slip on through when it comes to that. Um, so yeah, that's that's the basics of that fence. We did have an Intel Shock 60 solar power boost that was on there. Um, I like the 60s, they're more universal in my opinion. 
a 30 would be fine if you're just keeping a 100 foot fence, which that one is for chickens. But I would suggest getting a 60 because you never know, you might get a goat down the, down the way and that would help keep a goat in. Yeah. So you're seeing this video and this video was, you know, this, it was gonna be put out anyway, but it, you're kind of thinking like, well, this is weird timing. The world feels like it is on fire. Um, we're aware of that. We are praying for everyone. Um, we're keeping up to date on the situations that are going on. And more than anything, we're just pushing even harder here at home to make sure that we're set up with everything we need. That's why we do YouTube in the first place because we want you guys to do the same. We just want you to understand how important it is to take care of your family at home or yourself if it's just you, especially now. And that's why we're gonna continue to teach and show you everything that we do on the daily that makes it together as a whole to be sustainable as possible. Yeah, and don't let anybody tell you it's too late. I don't want you sitting on your hands and like, well, it's too late for me to do anything. No, every year there's something, right? It's like, oh, it's too late. Every you day, should. every yeah, day there's every, something you can do. Right, and so continue to do that. Even if you don't have the land to do so at this moment, you know, start growing something, start canning something, start preserving something. Um, and so having a bunch of meat chickens, I think we totaled up to 56 so. out there. Um, fantastic. We only had, I think, about a not counting that whole box that was passed um five or six mm -hmm. that died in the yeah. stages of us having it which is good that's a good ratio mm -hmm. out of you know over 50 chickens that we had um sometimes they can be trampling uh clogged buttocks <laughs> um which you can clean those but everyone which doesn't it. happen as much with meat chickens it's yeah. mostly laying hens yeah they're very hardy mm -hmm. especially these again not a fan of quarter crosses i think yeah. those things just drop over dead for no daggone reason <laughs> But these are the uh, big red rollers from Murray McMurray Hatchery. Um, I think they just call them Murray's Big Reds. Yeah. Um, so they're awesome. If you're interested, I'll have that link down below too. But the whole point of this and everything that we always do is to teach you how to start growing your own food and how to start right now. Yep. Because you can no matter where you are. That's right. All right, y'all. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do down below. We love y'all. Until the next one. Bye. Bye.